Hi. Now in this example, we're asked to show that cos to the power 4 of theta minus sine to the power 4 of theta plus 1 is identical to 2 cos squared theta. So to prove this one, put down proof and copy out, I would have thought the left hand side here has got three terms in and we need to show that it comes to one term. So clearly the left hand side is more complex. So starting with the complex side, we can hopefully reduce it down to that one term. So we'll put that in. And what is this identical to? Well, the first thing that I notice is that when I look at cos to the power 4 theta minus sine to the power 4 theta, I notice that this is what we call the difference, the minus there, the difference of two squares. This is the square of cos squared theta, and this is the square of sine squared theta. And the difference of two squares crops up an awful lot uh, in identities. I'll show you what I mean. When you've got something squared minus something else squared, let's say it's a squared minus b squared, you should know that when you factorize this, this is a minus b times a plus b. Or obviously you could write a plus b times a minus b, but essentially it's this, the difference of two squares. And so I'll run through that again. Cos to the power 4 theta is really the square of cos squared theta. And sine to the power 4 theta is the square of sine squared theta. And we've got a minus in here, so it becomes the difference of two squares. So if I use this principle, then I can factorize this first bit. I can say that it's cos squared theta minus sine squared theta multiplied by cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. And that, if you expanded it, would give us cos to the 4 theta minus sine to the power 4 theta. Don't forget though, we've got a plus 1 here, so we need to put that on the end. Now why was this useful? Well, you can see now, I hope, that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, well that's a well-known identity. You should recognize that that is 1. So what we've got now is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta plus 1. We got that and then it's being multiplied by 1 so it just gives us cos squared theta minus sine squared theta and then we get the plus 1. Now what about this bit here? Well going back to that identity that I was saying earlier okay sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to 1 Noticing what we've got to prove here hasn't got any sines in, and we've got something with sine squared theta in. But from this equation, this identity I should say, we could make sine squared theta the subject by taking cos squared theta from both sides. So we would therefore have that sine squared theta is identical to 1 minus cos squared theta. So in place of the sine squared theta, I'm going to write 1 minus cos squared theta. Got to be a bit careful here though because we've got a minus sign here. So we need to put this in brackets, the 1 minus cos squared theta. And then we've got this plus 1 on the end. Now if I expand this bracket out, we've got cos squared theta at the front here. Remember, this is minus 1 times each of these terms in here, so we're going to get minus 1 and then plus cos squared theta plus the 1 on the end. And you can see it taking shape now, I think, because we've got cos squared theta plus cos squared theta is 2 cos squared theta and minus 1 plus 1, well that's 0. So we've got it. There you go, 2 cos squared theta.